Tonight we're focusing in on Zoom with Galaxy AI on the new Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. Ah, a baby tiger. Check out his claws as he prepares to pounce on that frog. Close one, but not as close as this Zoom. We can literally count the whiskers and... Oh look, Mum's here. Good thing I'm nowhere nearby. Go wild with Galaxy AI on the new S24 Ultra and zoom in on the epic day or night. Get yours now at Samsung.com. 92% of households that join Peloton early in the year are still active a year later. Because of cycling? We also have a treadmill and Peloton guide. Guide? The thing that counts your reps? Yeah. It turns your TV into an AI-powered personal trainer. And with training programs like A Stronger You, Peloton Guide takes all the guesswork out of working out. 92% stick with it. So can you. Try Peloton Tread, Guide, or Bikes risk-free with a 30-day home trial. New members only. Not available in remote locations. See additional terms at onepeloton.ca slash home dash trial. Welcome to the Eric Erickson Show podcast, Hour 2. Hello, America. It is Eric Erickson here across the nation. The phone number, if you want to be on the program, 877-973-7425 is the program. I've got to switch gears from what I promised I was going to talk about because we have some big news happening right now. Um, It is a bloodbath on the stock market. Uh, The Dow is down more than 500 points. Uh, NASDAQ is down more than 200 points. S&P is down more than 64 points. Uh, It's pretty bad. Uh, Higher rates continue to pressure market sentiment. Uh, This is from the uh, CNBC. Home Depot was the worst performing Dow member, losing 5.6% after the home improvement retailer posted weaker than expected revenue from its fourth quarter with the muted outlook. The benchmark 10-year Treasury yield climbed to 3.9%, while the two-year rate advanced to 4.7%. Both rates also reached levels not seen since November as traders grappled with hotter-than-expected inflation data. Traders are worried that stubborn inflation will lead the Federal Reserve to keep rates higher for longer, which could tip the economy into recession. KKM Financial CEO Jeff uh, Kilberg thinks that investors should still remain optimistic, Despite the downturn, the Fed on Wednesday is scheduled to release the minutes from its meetings of January 31st and February 1st, uh, where they hiked uh, rates by 25 basis points after that meeting. So uh, there you go. Um, Stock market pretty bleak today, and more and more investors are thinking the S&P could actually tank. Uh, momentum has now broken the S&P's upward trend and it is decidedly in a bear market phase. So now, um, this is, this is where we're headed and just hold on to your hats as we head forward. Uh, you know, I, I've actually been thinking, so we have some credit card debt we've been paying off and I've actually been thinking about moving over into a home equity line of credit because the interest rates are so much lower than the credit card rate. And doing that, decisions, decisions that have to be made. Uh, Everybody's having to think about their future and future planning for their finances. All right, uh, let's switch gears here. I got to flip a switch because I I, I got this audio from MSNBC, and I got to make sure you can hear this. Uh, These people are having a very hard time of it. So I expect expected this to happen and i think it's going to escalate if and when tim scott gets into the race what we know historically is that progressives have a very hard time dealing with non-white republicans the 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 left is so into identity politics They have convinced themselves for several decades now that uh, non-white people vote Democrat. And if any non-white person votes Republican, they are accused of race treachery, being a race traitor. 
So they have a hard time grappling with Republicans who aren't white. They have a hard time talking about them without becoming the racist they claim the right is. There's a lot of projection on the left. The left claims Republicans are misogynist, and they say some of the most uh, deeply bigoted things about female conservatives. The left claims Republicans are homophobic, and they use gay slurs for anyone who is uh, voting Republican. They claim the right's a bunch of racists, and they say deeply racist things about anyone who isn't on the left. And so this has happened on MSNBC. Uh, Wahajit Ali, who is a, he's got some serious issues on the left, um, attacking her as, as a Dinesh D'Souza or a Candace Owens. Just listen in his own words. This is this is him. Talking about Nikki Haley, the former governor of South Carolina, United Nations ambassador, who has declared her run for the presidency. Nikki Haley instead is the Dinesh D'Souza of Candace Owens. She's the alpha Karen with brown skin. <laughs> and for white supremacists and racists, she's the perfect Manchurian candidate. So I see her and I feel sad, Mehdi because she uses her brown skin as a weapon against poor black folks and poor brown folks, and she uses her brown skin to launder white supremacist talking (laughs) points. Launder white supremacist talking points. This is, this is where the left is. They, they, they don't know how to handle it like Don Lemon. So CNN has said Don Lemon can come back on air after going to re-education camp. I I don't know why Don Lemon needs to go to re-education camp. He said what he said. You're not going to change the man's beliefs. The idea that he needs to go talk to someone about what he should and shouldn't say is is it's he's still going to believe the stuff. The the this think camp. Oh my gosh, I said something I shouldn't say. I need to. Uh, now go to re-education camp. That, that, that's a deeply leftist thing. Look, I disagree with, with Don Lemon, but he said what he said, and you're not going to change his mind. He, he can apologize. I would still note Don Lemon has never apologized to Nikki Haley, who he was saying these things about. He apologized to women generally and wouldn't apologize to Nikki Haley. But he said what he believed, and these people on the left have deeply racist things and misogynistic things to say about anyone who doesn't align with them, that Nikki Haley is somehow a vessel for white supremacy. What are they going to do when Tim Scott enters the ring? Here's the thing. Uh, The only thing the left hates more than a non-white woman is a black man who is a Republican. A black man is not supposed to be a Republican. If you will recall in 2020, the New York Times did a story, not an opinion piece, but a story trying to explain why black men might vote for Donald Trump. Their conclusion was the misogyny in rap music, that black men listen to so much rap music about abusing women and using the N-word that it has lulled them into voting for an authoritarian figure like Donald Trump, who has a thing for the women. No, I'm not making that up. They actually, this was the New York Times analysis of why black men in Florida in particular might vote Republican for Donald Trump. Now, what the exit polling in Florida actually showed is that these younger black men are getting jobs and they're getting out of prison thanks to Donald Trump's prison reform. They're getting jobs thanks to Donald Trump's economic reforms and they wanted to thank Donald Trump for that. They weren't necessarily Republicans per se. They were Trump voters, although by 2022 with DeSantis, they had become DeSantis voters and the New York Times was back at it, claiming that these uh, young black men, because of rap music, were voting for authoritarian tyrants and bullies. I wish I was making that up, but this is this is where they go. This is what they they head with. It, it it's kind of it's predictable and it's kind of sad. And when Tim Scott gets into the race, the amount of racism we're going to hear from people on the left is going to be through the roof. But right now, it's with Nikki Haley. So here's the thing. Let's talk about independent swing voters for a moment. Because both sides have to rely on these independent swing voters. Republicans thought they had them in 2022. For the first time in a very long time, these independent voters voted for the party in charge in a midterm. They were joined by 13% of the Republican Party. 
These people decided they did not like the Kerry Lakes of the world or the Mehmet Oz's of the world or the Herschel Walkers of the world or really even people like Marjorie Taylor Greene. They wanted sanity. And sadly, they thought they got more sanity from Democrats because the Democrats in their primaries, we should remember, in, in the open contested races, the progressives put up a lot of candidates in the Democratic Party, led typically by black women, got rid of those progressive uh, candidates in Democratic primaries. Now, they left AOC, they left Ilhan Omar, they left Rashida Tlaib, but there were a lot of races around the country with far-left radicals running, and even the Democratic Party voters said, nah, too far left for us. The Republicans, however, nominated the Kerry Lakes and the Herschel Walkers and the Mehmet Oz's and, and the, the what's-his-name Gibbs up in, in Michigan and the like, and the voters said, nope, 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 too crazy. We'll go with these Democrats. Well, when you have a Wajid Ali, or however you say his name, uh, Wajahad Ali, however, uh, when you you have Mehdi Hassan and you have the MSNBC crew of Joy Reid, and they're out there saying uh, deeply perverse racist things about Nikki Haley, bashing her as some sort of white supremacist, a token, uh, not not allowing for her as she is, not allowing for what she has accomplished, but degrading her and dragging her down, that too comes across as racist and insensitive and cruel to independent voters who don't want cruelty. Remember, Democrats said of, of Donald Trump cruelty was the point with his voters. Now suddenly it's these people who are coming across as cruel, these people who are coming across as racist, these people who are coming across as misogynistic, And independent voters aren't going to put up with it. This is why it's just so intriguing to have a growing number of non-white Republican candidates. Remember when Bobby Jindal, the governor of Louisiana, when he ran the first time, his opponent, Kathleen Blanco, ran ads that darkened his skin. They called him Piush in the ads because Bobby went by Bobby, but his first name was Piush. And they called him that in the ads. They darkened his skin in mail pieces to make him look very black when he's not. Democrats couldn't call out Democrats. And it actually was very effective. And he lost, but he made a big stink about it. And when it came around the second time, he every time they did it, he called it out. Every time he did it. And the reaction from a lot of voters was that this was kind of disgusting. And even a lot of black voters were upset about it, and they wouldn't bring themselves to vote for him, but they sat home. And Bobby Jindal got elected governor of Louisiana, and he served eight years. Pointing out the left's hypocrisy on this, pointing out they must not really mean it when they call Republicans racist, because look at the racist things they're saying about a Tim Scott or a Nikki Haley. It turns off a lot of voters, and because they're in a bubble with a bunch of people who agree with them, and there's no one to point out to them that this alienates independent voters, they double down on it. They triple down on it. Uh, they, They make larger and louder pronouncements about it, and this stuff ultimately undermines their own cause, their own side. It undermines their candidates because their candidates don't even call it out, or it gets to a sister soldier moment where their candidate has to call it out because it becomes so aggressively perverse. And that just helps the Nikki Haley's and the Tim Scott's of the world. The genius of having a Nikki Haley and a Tim Scott in the race is not only is a fulfillment of the American dream and shows real progress, but it drives people on the left so crazy they can't help themselves with the bat crap crazy things they say on television and radio. And it forces independent voters to realize these people say really intriguing things. I might be intrigued by this candidate, And it turns off independent voters so much from the left and their racism that they wind up going with these candidates. The MSNBC insanity about Nikki Haley does nothing but help Nikki Haley. And interestingly enough, there's a story out of the dispatch where they followed her around the campaign trail in Iowa and in South Carolina. And they were expecting to get a bunch of angry Trump supporters saying there's no way we can support her. And in fact, the Trump supporters... They're kind of intrigued by the way that the left is driven insane by Nikki Haley. And they're like, maybe it is time to move on from Donald Trump. We're not sure that it's Nikki Haley, but someone like her. She's intriguing to these Trump voters who want a fresh face, who want to move forward, who want to embrace new candidates, not old candidates. And they particularly love how insane she drives the people on MSNBC. And again, 
wait for a black man to get on the Republican side. It's going to drive them even more insane, and they're going to be even more racist on MSNBC. If you own a small to medium-sized business that kept employees on payroll through COVID, you may have a big cash refund waiting for you. The Employee Retention Credit is a tax credit of up to $26,000 per employee, and now more businesses than ever qualify. The experts at RefundsPro.com specialize in cutting through the red tape of qualifying for this government program. Most of their refunds are over $100,000. Even businesses that have received PPP funds may be eligible, and there are absolutely no fees unless you receive a refund. There's no reason not to apply. If your business experienced shutdowns, limited capacity, supply chain challenges, or even reduced revenue due to COVID, you likely qualify. RefundsPro.com has already helped hundreds of businesses, so don't lose the refund you're owed by missing the deadline. Get started today with a free five-minute questionnaire at Refunds with an S, RefundsPro.com. That's Refunds with an S, Pro. Hello there. Welcome. It is Eric Erickson. The phone number is 877-973-7425. Let's go to the phones. Dion, you're going to be up first. Welcome. Hey, thank you for taking my call. I appreciate you. Sure. <clears throat> so um, basically, you talk about the left, you know, and so what negativity, you know, in a negative form. And um, I understand you're a Republican, but the way you just talk about um, the left president, which is um, Biden, um, the things he's doing for the world, um, the way you describe him when it comes to democracy, like back in the Reagan era, I believe that Biden fits to be the next president when it comes to the economy, when it comes to COVID and everything else. And I I, I think that age is just a number. He, the man looks old, but I think he could do another five years if you give him a chance. And everybody else is just breaking down the country. Well, I will tell you, uh, my serious concerns with Biden, other than I, I disagree with him on policy, is is even White House aides say he's tired. That 10-hour trip uh, in from Poland into Ukraine and back wore him out. Um, he gets, uh, worn out when he's on stage and can't find his way off stage. He's at war with the English language regularly tripping over himself, not because he's stuttering, but because he loses his train of thought. Uh, and I actually think Biden is the one deeply dividing the country. Biden is the one who mandates vaccines for our military when we now know natural immunity, and we've known for a while, by the way, natural immunity was as or more effective than the vaccines, and yet Biden wants to throw out members of the military. He's been deeply destructive to the economy. I mean, we're headed into a recession. We did not have this inflation when Donald Trump was was president. Yes, we have amazing uh, employment rates, but we also have a massive number of people who dropped out of the economy contributing to that low unemployment where employers still can't find jobs. Uh, never mind the inflation that was predicted to come with Biden's policies, and it came with Biden's policies, and he said it was transitory, and then it wouldn't be a big deal, and then it wouldn't last a long time, and it's still here and still going up higher than they expected. I think he's deeply destructive to the economy. I don't find a Ron DeSantis or a Nikki Haley or a Tim Scott to be divisive. Uh, Joe Biden has been picking sides, playing sides, and you've, using COVID and other issues as a way to divide Americans. I would like a uniter, not a divider, which Joe Biden is, unless you're on the left. Y'all, I want to be real honest with you. Uh, I have looked, because you have asked me to look, for a reputable gold company that can give you advice and answer your questions that's not gimmicky. Like, for example, some of them do certificates, and some of them they try to rope you in with other stuff. You are interested in precious metals for your retirement savings uh, to ease the ebbs and flows of inflation and wild swings in the stock market. Advantage Gold. Advantage Gold. That's who you want to call. Uh, Advantage Gold, I have looked into them. I have had them answer my questions. And it is not one of these gimmicky places. There aren't tricks They really just want you to have a great experience learning how to be a gold investor. Give them a call, 800-450-2566, 800-450-2566. 
Tell them I sent you. You can get their free golden IRA investment kit, but call them if you got questions. They're good people. 800 450 2566. Welcome back. It is Eric Erickson here. I guess you should know Donald Trump is attacking Ron DeSantis today by uh, saying even Charlie Crist did a good job as governor of Florida. It, it seems like he's running out of stuff to attack DeSantis with. They, they've been spitballing stuff, uh, and he, it doesn't seem to be working for him, but maybe he can pull it off. I got to spend just a moment on NPR, National Public Radio. NPR has pushed a line for a while that um, they did not understand why there was so much pushback from the right on uh, banning uh, transgender surgeries for kids. According to NPR, uh, nobody was doing, nobody was performing these sorts of surgeries on kids, either um, uh, at a dickectomies or, or you name it, um, as Rush Limbaugh would have said. They, 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 just, they, weren't, they weren't doing these sorts of surgeries. They, they weren't chopping off body parts. They weren't adding body parts. They weren't constructing uh, bits of kids or lumping them off. They, they, they just weren't doing it, according to National Public Radio. There were a series of stories from NBR saying essentially conservatives had lost their mind complaining about this stuff because it was not happening. And now, after Ron DeSantis... Uh, pushes the Florida legislature to ban transgender uh, surgeries on preteens and teens, suddenly NPR is running a story that parents are raising concerns about it because their kids want it. I thought you told us it wasn't happening. When 13-year-old Liz Bostock thinks back, she remembers feeling in between genders as early as preschool. Assigned male at birth, she identifies, I'm just reading you the story, I'm not changing the pronouns to what they should be. She identified as non-binary by fifth grade and decided to use they, them pronouns. Now a seventh grader at Gainesville, Florida, with a passion for manga and anime video games and a bedroom filled with stuffed animals, Liz identifies as female and transgender. I figured out that I actually felt like a girl, she says, not just in between. Liz's birth certificate now bears her new legal name and gender marker. After months of counseling and with a diagnosis of gender dysphoria, Liz started receiving puberty blockers last August. Every three months, she gets a shot of Lupron, uh, gonadotropin releasing hormone, that essentially presses the pause button on male puberty. The goal is to keep her body from developing further in ways that don't align with her gender identity. It's been amazing, says her mother, Virginia Hamner, who says she's seen her daughter lighten up with gender-affirming care. It's fun and exciting for her to be able to be exactly who she wants to be. But under new rules passed by Florida's medical board, it's unclear whether Liz will be able to continue treatment. Florida is one of a growing number of states to prohibit gender-affirming care for transgender minors. It's the only state to not do so, to do so not through legislative action, but through the medical board. Wait, I, I thought we had to trust the experts. Uh, These are the experts, the medical board, they're the experts. You're saying that the experts aren't really the experts anymore? What what is this? This is the medical, this isn't politics, this is the medical board. You know, they're doing this in Europe as well, where in Europe they're reining this stuff in, they've decided that it's gone too far. Uh, You are the people who told us it wasn't happening, and now you're telling us it's outrageous that it's being stopped because people want it. What's the truth here, NPR? Why are you changing the story? So I, I gotta I, I gotta go back to what I wrote the other day, and I hope you'll read it. If you text data to three three seven seven seven, just click the second link. You don't need a subscription to read it. 
here's the problem with this. And, and you know, according to NPR, dozens of leading U.S. medical groups, including the American Academy of Pediatrics, the American Medical Association, and the Endocrine Society, endorsed gender-affirming care as time-tested, effective, medically necessary, and potentially life-saving. So it's the experts, the other experts, the left-wing experts that we should listen to. We shouldn't listen to Sweden, Norway, Finland, many European countries. We should listen to liberals in this country who have expertise. Y'all, I, I, there's a real problem shaping up here that these institutions have been captured by the left. Remember, the American Academy of Pediatrics for a very long time said that uh, children, toddlers, infants – needed to be up close and personal with you and see your facial expressions to learn to read people. And when suddenly everyone started mandating masks for kids, memory hold all of that data and research. And now it's like, no, it doesn't really matter. We have kids across this country who have speech impediments and have a hard time understanding and reading people's facial expressions because groups like that suddenly decided after years of saying they needed access to your face to be able to read your face, now say, no, they don't all to go along with progressive opinion. We're to treat these people seriously. We're to believe these people. We're to elevate them over, over a medical board in Florida. Here's the reality. Transgenderism is incompatible with biology. It's a mental issue. And if you're going to say, well, we need to provide people medical help to alleviate their mental condition, I'm willing to have that conversation. But it has to start with the recognition that this is a mental health issue. And they don't want to admit it's a mental health issue because they're afraid that by saying it's a mental health issue, that suggests it's not normal. And they want it to be normalized. They're trying to have their cake and eat it too on this issue. And it's neither good nor helpful. And the other thing that I just, I, I got to hold on to here. This is the one that gets you hate mail. Is there is a recurring pattern in the behaviors and surroundings and environment in which a lot of the kids who are dealing with these issues deal with them. You don't find these problems typically in third world countries. You don't find these problems in uh, grounded two-parent nuclear household families. There's a particular pattern that tends to show up where these sorts of things manifest themselves. And that doesn't suggest it's a physical genetic issue. It suggests it's something else. Uh, and Nobody wants to talk about that, and you're a hater if you talk about it, but it is increasingly impossible, I think, for many people to deal with these issues when no one wants to talk about the issue. They want to bully and silence anyone who raises the concerns, which is why, to some degree, you actually have to speak up and deal with these things and take on the concerns because NPR, for example, spent a lot of energy telling us this was not a thing for people. For people under 18, and now that Ron DeSantis and, and the medical board in Florida have said, don't do this for the people under 18 that NPR says it's not happening to anyway, we should be fine. Now they're like, oh my gosh, we got all these people under 18 who want this treatment. You just told us no one did. It's funny how they do that. It, it's like, this is not a problem and you shouldn't complain about it. Like, like just take the gas stoves. It's not a problem. It's not happening. We're not going to ban it. Okay, let's pass a law that says you can't ban gas, gas stoves. Oh, my gosh, you haters. Why are you killing the environment? We need to get rid of these stoves. We've already gotten rid of these stoves. I mean, it, it doesn't happen until it's happened, and then you're a bigot for opposing it. This is the pattern for so much of what the left wants to do these days. All right, enough on that topic. I, I, I want to spend a moment on Vivek Ramaswamy. You, you may not know the name. If you're on social media, you, you probably should know the name. 
let me play you some audio that is out there. Um, this is from Glenn Beck's program uh, from the other day. Uh, let me reroute the audio here so you have it here. Again, this is Glenn Beck. Both care about. I know that about both of us. And the question of the who then just becomes a lot easier after we've defined those things. That's what I'm most focused I, on. I have to tell you, I, I, I support you 110%. Um, you are outside the system. You are very successful at what you've done. You have identified all of the right problems. You have worked to actually solve them yourself through the private sector. I think you get it. Um, uh, you know, I, I'm not endorsing anybody for president at all. I think there's a lot of good people out there. However, um, the voice that you could bring to the table, even if you didn't win, you could shape the platforms uh, of the party. I, I think it's I think it's very important, actually, that you run. That was Glenn Beck talking to Vivek Ramaswamy. This is uh, from Vivek's uh, Twitter account itself from the other day. The whole premise of this discussion is predicated on the fact that Twitter is the forum, is one of the main forums for open public discourse and debate today. It is one of the the reasons I love this program, is that people with diverse views can come together and exchange those views. We have lost those sacred spaces. Say what you will about Twitter. It is one of those few spaces on the Internet today where people are still able to engage in dialogue outside of their echo chambers. Come back to your question, though. Is very dangerous. If you look at the Capitol, Washington Post put out a story yesterday about how the Capitol Police watched this break in or would have if anybody was monitoring the cameras. The stuff that was said about him definitely leads to additional violence. And you can say this. I'm not saying this just about yeah. the Democrats. This is definitely a situation where Republicans have been put in this position. We're going to have Scalise on, who was shot. He's going to of course. To us about these so, so this but is, but Becky, the only thing I will tell you is this is not unique to this moment. We have been having this debate in this country since 1776. Now, uh, he has not said whether or not he's going to run for president. He's strongly hitting at it. Uh, and his his whole idea, essentially, and his whole angle is ESG, the, the um, what environmental social governance standards. He's been a very loud opponent of that. He's been in Iowa. And again, most of you don't know him. This is very much an Andrew Yang-style candidacy. Uh, a lot of people are comparing it to Donald Trump. Well, he's this outsider, billionaire, flies in his own private plane. A lot of people, it's, it's more Andrew Yang. He, he's got a very niche, niche, as the elite would say, uh, angle on running, um, entrepreneurial, unorthodox ideas, not tested. I don't even know what, what team is running. I, I would just caution him. If he wants to enter, welcome to the field. I am intrigued by a lot of what he says. I was at a conference recently, and he was there as well speaking uh, to a crowd, and, and they loved what he had to say about battling ESG. I would just say this. If you get in, given his given his background, uh, given his money, given what he wants to do, he runs the risk of being surrounded by a bunch of advisors who will bleed him dry without actually advancing his candidacy. He should be very careful should he want to get in? And if he wants to get in, what is the end game? Uh, if he believes it is to win, God bless him for that. I, just like Andrew Yang's candidacy, I don't know what is going to happen. Um, he, he may become a contributor for Fox News or he may get a cabinet position. But also, um, you want to try to recreate what Donald Trump did in 2016. Donald Trump is getting in the race. How do you distinguish yourself? He needs to ask himself some very tough questions. He's going to be wooed by a lot of people who want his money, who don't really care about him. That's the problem here for a lot of these guys. They don't care about him. They find him intriguing, and they find his money alluring. What real impact does he want to have on the campaign stage? He can shape the conversation without being on the stage, be less of a headache for him and his family, and less of a drain on his wallet to do so. If he wants to run, though, welcome to the field. Happy to have you on stage in Atlanta in August at the gathering uh, as we talk to all of these candidates and put them before the real grassroots to see how they position themselves. Now, one of the groups that is involved in supporting conservative candidates around the country is Patriot Mobile. They want your business because if you go to Patriot Mobile, and you become a customer, not only do you get guaranteed great service, but they also support the causes you care about. So, for example, 
Patriot Mobile funds conservative parents running for school boards against the wokes, and they've got a 100% uh, batting a 1,000 win record right now. They also fund the Second Amendment cause and the pro-life cause. They give a portion of their profits, and they give a portion of their profits by growing their business. So if you take your business to Patriot Mobile by going to patriotmobile.com slash Eric or by calling them at 972-PATRIOT, tell them I sent you, you get free activation. They then, as they grow their profits, spend more money on the conservative movement. It's a great way to grow the movement and also get guaranteed great service. They use the same cell towers you're probably already using with your existing company anyway but they're committed Christian conservatives. PatriotMobile.com slash Eric is where you need to go or Patriot Mobile uh, or 972 Patriot. Tell them I sent you, you get guaranteed great service. Uh, you get a, a free activation with my name. You get great discounts. You're a veteran, a first responder, an NRA member, a teacher. Uh, so many good discounts. PatriotMobile.com slash Eric or 972 Patriot. This is the program brought to you by First Liberty Building and Loan. Wherever you are nationwide, you want your business to grow. They can help your business grow. FirstLibertyGA.com. Spend 10 minutes with them. See if you're a good fit for the program. FirstLibertyGA.com. Tell them I sent you. Google is before the Supreme Court today. I mentioned the case yesterday. They're being sued by a family whose daughter uh, was the victim of a terror attack in, in Paris. The argument is that Google's algorithm uh, makes them liable for the terrorist attacks because in their algorithm, they showed ISIS videos. There's no evidence the terrorists saw the videos, but under uh, a terrorism law in the United States, they the family argues Google's somehow complicit. It's, it's something I, I noted yesterday that you should hope Google wins because if they do not win, the algorithms are going to become even more restrictive because of liability purposes. There's going to be even less opportunity for you to get your message out online. Uh, they're not going to get rid of the algorithm. They're going to be even more restrictive to you, and it's going to harm conservatives. So I put this up, and we pushed the video out yesterday, and the very first comment was, well, they may be right, but I can't side with Google ever. And I see some conservative friends of mine essentially saying, screw Google. Uh, I hope they go down in flames. Winston Churchill very famously said that if Hitler invaded hell, he, he, that Churchill would muster a few good words about the devil himself. This is a, a problem in our polarized age where everything is black and everything is white, is because Google is against us, we want them to burn. The problem with that attitude is that you will burn if Google burns. In this case, it's over Section 230. There are a lot of people who want the court to rewrite, modify, or put caveats into Section 230 of the Communications Act. Uh, this Section 230 allows websites to moderate content without being responsible for the content. If Google's algorithm uh, is not found to be part of Section 230 and Google becomes liable for things that its algorithm shows, the algorithm's not going away because they can't hire enough manpower, they can't hire enough people to manage the flow of content. So what's going to happen is the algorithm gets even more restrictive. And that means you and me as conservatives are gonna be more likely censored than we already are. And we already are censored. This is gonna make it even worse. The people who wanna to, want to cut off their nose to spite their face are going to cut us out of the conversation altogether if Google goes down. You don't have to like Google to recognize that if they lose, there's going to be more censorship online, not less. And you should be thinking about that instead of just wanting to smite Google. With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details.